If you think that you need IT certifications and a bunch of skills like hacking or coding to make the transition to cybersecurity, you need to watch this video because you're about to hear the story from Kevin Liddington, who went from being a teacher of 15 years to now remote, fully remote, cybersecurity specialist making six figures and beyond in just a little over a year as Baxter Clewis Training Academy. You have to hear his story. It is phenomenal. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Kevin, welcome to the podcast. I am super excited to have you here. You know, um, at BC, we have thousands of clients, man, but there's not too many. And I'm just going to go out. I'm just going to say this. Not too many that actually consider a friend, a friend. Um, yeah, Likewise. man. Yeah, man. The the relationship that we've built over the, the past year plus has been next level. And I am excited to talk about your transformation, how you went from being a school teacher to now a fully remote cybersecurity professional. So man, like, so tell me, how do you feel right now? Uh, feels great. It's a total just uh, life changer, to be honest with you. I mean, it was something that I envisioned for a while and, and, and I'd always wanted to work remote. I knew I wanted to actually change a career, especially as I had a family. Um, I, I'd spent, you know, just like you said, I spent 15 years as a teacher. Love my job. You know, I love, love, you know, interacting with those students, but Towards the last few years, I knew that I needed to change. And a lot of that was um, I wanted a salary increase in order to better provide for my family. And the what I was teaching was all um, it was all technology based. I mean, I taught robotics, I taught STEM. Um, and so I was around that that type of stuff. And cybersecurity just really interests me. And so I spent I, I went back to school to get a two year degree at Collin College, which, you know, Mm -hmm. here in Texas, right, right in Dallas. Um, and I got a cybersecurity um, two-year degree, associates loved it. But the biggest thing that they all wanted was experience. You know, when mm -hmm. you try to reach out to some of these companies, it's, you know, what can you do for me? You know, you have this knowledge, you understand stuff, but that's great. But, you know, how do you actually apply that to, you know, whatever environment, whatever cybersecurity career that you're trying to get into? And that was probably the biggest issue that I had. You know, it wasn't necessarily the book knowledge, et cetera. It was what can you provide for me? Um, is there a, you know, was there a job out there? I didn't really even know what, you know, what area of cybersecurity that I wanted to get into at that point either. Because cybersecurity, when you say cybersecurity, that's broad, man. Man, like, you know, it's I'm so broad. Here are you, you know? And so it's very, very broad. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. And, and, uh, it's been great. You know, I, I, um, I went into your program. I remember I was just kind of searching around on the website, just, just looking, you know, with what's out there. Do I go, you know, get my master's degree since nothing was actually opening up. And, <laughs> and I saw an ad, I can't remember if it was Facebook or if it was Google, it came across. And then I reached out to, uh, to you. And then I talked to, um, one of your sales guys. I can't remember his name. Eric. Um, he was at, Yes, it was Eric, and he was excellent. He was excellent. We talked two or three times, man. I did my research, and he even told me up front, do your research, do your research, talk to your wife, make sure that this is going to be feasible. And I did. I did my research, and I was so excited, man. I, uh, I remember joining your program. And so I joined your program in uh, July of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into your internship program, I would say, probably November-ish of that same year. Um, and I, you know, I got a lot of projects thrown my way. And as soon as I got into your internship program, and then I, you know, I up my LinkedIn, I, you know, I got my resume turned around. I mean, I started getting recruiters sometimes daily and not, not just like one recruiter. We're talking two or three recruiters. Um, and some were for PCI related type positions. Some were compliance as an overall, some were you remember the American Airlines one? I mean, that was a vulnerability yep. management position. Yep. Um, when you start addressing requirement 11, I mean, really when you start addressing, you know, learning this framework that you teach from PCI DSS, it really does, um, covers a lot. And, and, and especially if you start really diving into each one of those requirements, you know, you can go technical, requirement one, 
when you start getting into your, your firewalls, your networking and all that stuff, I mean, you can apply this not just to PCI DSS, but to many different avenues that are out there within the cybersecurity space. And so I ate it up, man. And then I'll, I'll be honest, like my story is probably different than most. You know, I, I, I remember so? people within the, well, I, I come at it, you know, and this may be for some of you guys are, but like, you know, I don't have that, uh, that technology type background, you know, I didn't either. I'm a teaching background, you know? Um, and so it took a little extra effort, I would say for me, just learning all these diff different environments and um, the technicality behind it. And, and that's the one beauty of the PCI DSS. You don't necessarily have to be real technical. It helps mm -hmm. when you start addressing some of these requirements, especially when you start doing some of these you know, the SAC Ds, you know, if you're doing a SAC A or PDPE, maybe not as much, but it helps, especially when you start talking to these clients. And if I were to show you behind that, my, my office is quite a mess. I've got <laughs> routers and just to, just to teach myself, man. And I think that's the biggest thing is not just, you know, thinking that you're going to come into this program and just land a job right away. You got to put in the work, man. And so so I, I got yeah, yeah. I got to interrupt you for a second, dude, because you've said sure. some critical things. First of all, I want to congratulate you, man, for being a man of action. Like if y'all are listening, do y'all hear what this man said? He was a teacher for 15 years. He went and got an associate's degree, which means he invested in himself. He took action to make it happen. That didn't work out for him. Then he turned around and invested in himself again to join the program. God sent himself routers and switches at home to put in the work so that he could understand what he was doing. He realized and wasn't trying to use the certifications, degrees, and all that stuff as a crutch to land a job, but he actually put in the work to develop skills. Skills. Dude, I I applaud you for that, man. I applaud no, you. No, I appreciate that. And a lot of that just, it's, it was just kind of a an eagerness to want to change careers and you know, it, it's anything that you put yourself into, it's, it's what you make of it, you know, the effort that you put into it, the hard work you put into it. And and I, and I we had people in that program, remember that they were getting jobs within three or four months. Yep. That wasn't my case. And that's okay. I wasn't ready, I guess, you know, and um, it took me a, a full year. And, and I'll be honest, towards the, the end of that year, I started having my doubts a little bit, but I just I kept. <laughs> I remember kept, that, dude. Me. I yeah, remember you texting I was, me. I was, like, oh, I was like, dude. You've been doing the work when it is your time. I promise you it's going to work remember. out. Don't yep. rush it. <laughs> yep. And it did, man. And, and you praise God because it, uh, it it put me in the right place at the right time. And um, it's still, I mean, it's, you'll step in these roles and, and um, you're still going to learn a lot. I'm still in, you know, I'm at the consultant level here at Pativity and it, uh, it's, it's, it's still a big learning curve, but the foundation was set, the foundation was laid. And the other group, I think the other promising thing to this program, and I, and I think I told you, boy, this, it's kind of the hidden gem is, is the, the networking that, that comes with this programming. The cyber this hero program. network. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it really is. Because I, I still contact several people. I mean, I've already, I mean, I, I gave you the name yesterday, the, the individual mm -hmm. that I, had a zoom this this week with with him I, i've contacted with him as well by phone i mean he he just landed another role and um yep. with another yep. qs so we were i was actually he hit me up about him. that man yeah he's totally jazzed about it man and so it's i i would say that not just the program itself and the in the material that you're going to learn and the experiences you're going to get through the internship but it's also the networking and that when the program is all said and done it's huge because that when jobs come up and and I say this to anybody, if, if I see something in productivity, um, you know, I, I've got a, a ton of people that I can reach out to Baxter clue is for and say, Hey, I got a, you know, an AQSA opening here, or I got a consultant level type position here. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and Boyd can reach out to me and, and say, hey, I've got these individuals and, and I can talk to them and hopefully uh, submit their names within the, you know, referral, um, type submission here at Pativity. And so yep. I, you that's know, actually, I think that that's is what we've been building out, man. We've been building out. So we actually have one of our um, cyber hero grads is at Qualys right now. And so he's pulling people from the program and putting them into technical account manager positions that are paying 140 K plus man with, with the bonus yeah. 
I'm like, dude, like, this is what I wanted, man. So for like, and that's why we just don't allow people to just enroll. Like you can't just go to a website and enroll in the program. We got to make sure that you have the right heart, the right spirit, because we're not looking for people to come in, snatch all the resources and leave. We're looking for people to come in transform their lives and then continue to contribute back to the community because this is how we essentially crowdsource opportunities for our future clients. It's next oh, level, man. Like, huge. I mean, you want to make sure people's heart are right, are, are really into this because it's it's an investment. Yep. But it's a well, um, I think it's it's worth investment if you're willing to put that in and you want to change your life. And and like I said, I told you yesterday, um, it has been a it's a blessing towards my family and I. It really has been the program itself and and uh they not just financially, but it just I'm, I'm working remote. I mean. My kid gets sick. I can go and get him right now and he could be right beside me. I mean, there's a lot of pluses to this. And so it's just not, not about the money. It's about the, um, it's about all the other little things that, that you don't think about when you're actually sitting in an office. And so I love work, working remote and it's been great. And so I've got to so let's, let's talk about that, man. Cause I, I know it has yep. to be extremely different, man, because like you go from being a teacher in the classroom for 15 years now you're making probably significantly more money in your PJs, essentially, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I mean, yesterday when I, I filmed that video for you, I just came back from the office office. And that was the third time that I've actually been to the office. And the only reason I went to the office was because I had to get a headshot. And so <laughs> I, was all, I was all dressed up for this video. I'm literally wearing like sweatpants right now and i just went through the uh, that a t-shirt i'm like uh, I'll, I'll grab this shirt or whatever and put it on for void but uh yeah it, it changed significantly i mean i i was probably your typical person i was getting up at five in the morning i still get up early because i get my boys to school um but um and then i'd, I'd be at school just like everybody i mean at, at work at 7 30 in the morning and i might be home by five uh, sometimes a little bit later depending upon what i was doing and what my boys are doing now flexibility of you know, if I want to go have a lunch with somebody, I can I go have lunch with them. I I can schedule meetings throughout the day. I've, um, and so it's it it has changed. And and I, I would say, um, if you do end up going the PCI route, uh, you know, there's there's different types of uh, jobs that are out there. Whereas I'm a consultant, and so I I get to deal with many different clients that are out mm -hmm. there. And so I schedule my time based upon what is opening. And so, like, if you were to go work for a, you know, a company like Best Buy or uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever it is, uh, you're going to be running their PCI program. And so it's going to be very specific to their company. And so it depends on what you want. You know, do you want to be an ISA? Do you want to be a QSA? It's, um, do you want to see a lot of different environments that are out there? I, I, you know, I love this part of actually being able to, to, to uh, work with a lot of different people. And, and so it's, it's just, it's, there's a lot of flexibility and it just depends on what your long-term goals are and where you see yourself. Yeah, let me ask you this, because what most people will do is, for, you know, what we focus on is uh, to a degree, the PCI DSS standard, but we understand how to leverage it to become cybersecurity specialists. What do you have to say to somebody that thinks that they can just download this standard online and then reproduce the results that we have at BC? Yeah, I don't see that happening. No way, no way. <laughs> in fact, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's one of the, the beauty of, of, of your program is, is yes, I mean, you can go and read the standards, but really understanding the standards that that's, that's, that's what, what's key, but you, you produce the, all the videos and, and just the resources of the different projects that are out there, your, your weekly meetings on Thursdays and, um, and um, the questions that you ask during those meetings, those are huge. Um, and so, and, and I, I, I remember I was actually around when um, the program wasn't nearly as big as it is now, but the, the resources that, that are in place now, they're huge. I mean, they were big when I was first started, but they've, um, your new platform and the way you've got it structured of going up through freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and then your internship program, that was there. It was, it was a little bit different when we first started, but uh, it's it's just a wealth of knowledge out there with all those videos and then uh, being able to, to use that chat environment that you have and being able to ask questions. Um, it's, I just don't see how you, 
you get a lot from that. And so, so people don't get that, man. And I, I appreciate you talking about those upgrades because one of the things I've done is as we have become more successful, I have reinvested a significant amount of resources into bringing on more staff and um, more technology and solutions to make sure that all of our clients can get the best results. Because when I first started this company, I mean, we didn't have the money to pull off what we're doing right now, because like most people don't realize it in order for me to run this operation to help people like you, it costs more than a million dollars a year. Yeah. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Yeah. So people are like, oh, why don't you just give me this thing for free? I'm like, bro, do you not realize I spend a million dollars a year on the low end to provide an exceptional level of service to our clients? So you got to pay to play. And then you got my time involved and I understand my value. So I'm going to bill you accordingly. Believe me, I'm going to bill accordingly. <laughs> yep. I, get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, anybody that's out there kind of on the fence again, I mean, I, I it's uh, you got to. I would say, where do you see yourself long term? You know, do you do your reach out to people like me? I've had several people who have actually reached out to me and, and asked me questions. You know, I think that's that's smart to do your due diligence, but I've got nothing but good things to say about the program. It's produced the results for me, but it's it's like any program that's out there. If you were to go get a four year degree, a two year degree, it's that you can just part of your way through it or you can actually put your time into it and 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 really try to get as much as you can out of it and and something will come of it you'll be blessed with with you know whatever position that that's uh that hopefully that you are wanting to pursue and so i was and i'm, I'm living proof of that yep yep and you did the work though man and i can't stress again for people that have been invited to join the program because i'm going to be real man there's um there is a percentage of people out there that are disgruntled with me and my company. And it's crazy that they take zero responsibility for the result. Like, yep. I am so confident in this process. Now, we actually guarantee our services now. So I guarantee that I will get you a six-figure interview in a given time period. And it's up to you to take what I've taught you to go to the interview and actually show that you can do it. Like, I can train you to become the, the plastic surgeon of cybersecurity. But if you show up as the Forrest Gump of cybersecurity, you're not going to get the job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, people don't show up to the live sessions. They don't complete the online exercises. They don't get their resume supercharged. They don't go to the internship. And then they say, boy, it didn't help me. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, yeah. I, and, I, and all those things are in place for a reason, right? I mean, I, and because if you were to actually take advantage of all those things, you're able to actually talk about those things in your interview. That's my point, man. Yeah, every single one of those projects, whether it be on, you know, the, the weekly call there on Thursdays or uh, even just the interviews, you know, I, I had the chance to actually be a, what we call the project manager of a couple of projects. Um, I was able to actually put that on my resume. I was actually able to, and more than just putting on your resume, it's, it's when you actually get in front of the actual potential employer, it's, you're able to talk about, you know, the projects that you've actually done, because that's the first thing they're going to ask you. Yep. They're not going to really ask you a lot. Most of them that I, to my recollection, never really asked me 10 years prior. You know, in no. fact, I would say all of them never even asked me about my teaching position. Is Maybe it, one it doesn't or two. Matter. I would say one or two, like some of the recruiters did, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but once I got in front of the actual company, company, um, uh, it's like they didn't care. It's like, what is no. so tell me? Actually, what projects That's what i want people to understand man it's like oh man like it, even un, under the comments in this video you're gonna see people talking about well you need to get a network plus an a plus like do you have any of those no and not at all and i didn't have any of those coming in and in fact i those are good things to have there's nothing wrong with those but you no. don't need them. like right. with my current company in fact i don't I don't even think they want me. I mean, I could go get a network plus. That's a good thing. Again, that would probably cover some of like requirement ones, but for like me to become a QSA, all I care about is, at this point is my CISA, CISM, maybe my CISSP, but yep. they're paying for it all, you know? Exactly. And, so and, and that's the thing. There's nothing wrong with certifications at all. No, at the all. problem I have is people telling somebody to go get an A plus, a network plus, a security plus, and then get a job. And that it doesn't work like that because people are going to ask you 
what is your skill set and what's your experience? They don't care about the piece of paper itself. It's just like, I mean, you've experienced yourself. You can get the degree, but without seeing how you leverage it or use those skills, nobody's going to hire you. And that's what I want people to understand. Number one, if you're going to get certified, make sure a company is paying for it. If you're going to take training to get a certification, make sure that you actually are acquiring knowledge, not a brain full of test dumps, because then you are going to suck. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing to, it's just like going to school. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to school and getting a degree, but there's one thing to to learn all that stuff, the book knowledge, but it's, it's completely different when you're actually in the setting and, and actually having to, to complete some of these projects. Um, and so uh, there, there is a difference, man. And so that's why I think experience is key. It, it really is. And then those certifications, they're great to have. I, I don't knock them by, by any means, but just like you don't, but uh, it's one of those things that once you get in your company, figure out what they want you to have. So then you can apply it to whatever route that you go. Like, I don't know exactly what they, you know, if you're an ISA, what you know, certifications other than the ISA certification, <laughs> that they want you to have, I imagine they want you to have some type of uh, CISM or CISA type certification as well. I could be wrong. I know the QSA does. Yeah, um, you don't need it for the for the ISA. It's cool to leverage ISA. the ISA experience to get those. And, and it makes it a lot easier to pass those certifications when you've actually been doing the work. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. I agree. So, but uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So let, let me ask you this final, final question. Well, okay. So it's, it's the two part question. Number one, did you have any reservations or imposter syndrome when you were quitting your job? And then what advice do you have to somebody about making this transition? Because somebody, a lot of the people in the comments on the YouTube channel, they believe that they're too old or they no. don't have any experience to make the transition. Like talk, talk about that. No, you're never too old. Right. I mean, you, sometimes you hear about those, these older people that are getting their, their degrees, like when they're 60, 70 years old. I mean, I, age is just a number. I mean, where do you see yourself? What, where, where do you see yourself long-term? I think that's huge. I mean, what kind of quality of life do you want to have? I mean, if you continue in the position that you're in and you're just, you're stressed out and you're constantly thinking of money, um, I think that, that then that's a, that's a sign to me that, that it's time to, to maybe start looking at other avenues. And so, um, and for me, when, and yeah, when I got this position, I didn't think twice about uh, quitting my job. I, I think the hardest thing for me was leaving all those students because I've, you know, I, I have a passion for helping and guiding other people. And I think that's just something that God's put on my heart. And so, but, but I knew it was time. I, I really did. And so, you know, I, 15 years, I spent almost, almost 10 years at the same school. Um, and so that was probably the hardest thing, just, just contact my manager and letting her know that, you know, I'm making this completely different life career change but it's been for the better it really has and and you go through phases in life that you know maybe one phase is you're doing this in your career and and then all of a sudden you have a family and you're doing something else or maybe uh, you're you're close to retirement age and you want to do something completely different there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever and so um and that was the other question about somebody that's coming into the program. <laughs> so for, for people that are thinking, well, so you, you pretty much answered it, man. You pretty much answered it. So, I mean, ultimately when, when you were doing your, your research, what made you decide to join in and trust this random guy that you saw on the internet? Yeah, that, that was huge. And especially um, because I, I didn't know you, but you know, I did my research. I, I did some stuff. I looked it up Um and, um, you know, I talked to Eric for a while. I talked to my wife and, and I remember my wife was like, well, how much is it? I'm like, I told her how much. And she was like, you know, if, if this is something you're going to do, you just go wholehearted into it, you know, and you really man, that's it. some support right there, man. Yeah, and she, she kind of blessed it and, and we figured out a way to, to finance it. And, um, and so I jumped into it and I gave her my word that this is what I was going to do. And, um, I mean, it was either that or, you know, I was looking at the master's degree, but at the same time, I didn't have a position. So I was going to spend 20 to 30 K on a, a master's degree. And um, there was no guarantee I was going to get a position. You know, there's no guarantee you're going to get a position. It's always, are you willing to put in that work? And so I, yeah, I did my research. I looked you up. I looked up, looked you up on like Google and LinkedIn. And I, I found a ton of stuff and talking to Eric and, um, and it, yeah. And I just jumped into it. I mean, I just felt like that God was, was saying, do it, do it, do it. I just felt kind of a peace among, among it. And, 
And so I just jumped off that cliff, man. And, and, uh, yeah, I haven't looked back since, man. And that's why I'm always like, when you ask me, you know, if you need anything or if, if or you've asked me like to do videos, or whatever, I'm like, I'm the first person, like sign me up, man. I'll do a video for you, you know, cause I, I believe in this program. I think it's great. And if I, if I can give back to the community in any way, and if this is some small part, great. If I can help out with, um, you know, maybe Fertivity has something or a company that I eventually work for, you know, I, uh, you're the first person I'll go to, you know? Man, I appreciate that. Hey, put me in contact with the hiring manager because you know we got Baxter Clue is yeah, staffing yeah. now so I can staff some people. And then I need you to speak at Cyber Hero Con, man, coming to you oh, yeah. June. I mean, July 14th and 15th right. okay. in the Dallas-Fort right. Worth area. Let's go. Absolutely, man. Sign me up. So <laughs> Let's go. Dude, I am extremely proud of you, man. Uh, when, when people are looking for resources to talk to, especially if they don't have like any IT background and they are concerned about how this is going to work for me. Like you are the first person that I think of, man, because no, I just I remember how eager you were and how much you put in the work. And there's a, a like, there's, there's actually a personality type that we've determined who's going to be success. They follow instructions and they're very active in the live sessions very active and you were extremely active. So I knew that there was no way that you could not be successful, man. And that's why, like when you would reach out to me and I was like, dude, it's, it's going to work out. It is yeah, yeah. going to work out. I had no doubts. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. That was, uh, that's the cool thing about your community as well. You can reach out to anybody. And so it's uh, yeah, absolutely. I got nothing but good things to say. So I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool, cool. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your, your busy schedule. But I will say also, man, we are, I'm not going to say what time this is, but yeah, Home, homie has some flexibility right now. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Well, man, I will let you get back to work. I appreciate you tremendously, man. Keep up the good work. And if I can be a resource for you to help you out, let me know. You know, I Sorry. got my diagrams and my whiteboards. I'm always ready to solve some appreciate PCI that. network problems, man. Let's get it. I appreciate that, man. All right. Well, you have a great day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, let me know down in the comments if you got some value from this video. Were you aware that you can make the transition into cybersecurity without any previous IT experience? I want to hear from you. Let me know. If you're looking for a way to upgrade your career into a six-figure cybersecurity career, just like Kevin did, I invite you to join the Baxter Clues Training Academy. Go over to www.boydclues.com forward slash GRC. Click the link right in the description. Apply to join the BC Academy so that we can help you take your career to the next level so you can experience that life transformation just like Kevin did. Well, guys, that's all for this video. I will see you on the next one.